Okay, let's clear the air here. When people hear about the observer effect in quantum mechanics, they love to say things like, hey, humanity creates reality. Or even worse, the universe needs us to exist. Well, I'm here to tell you that those notions aren't just wrong, they're totally misleading. But don't worry, I'm not blaming you if you've been swept up by these ideas. After all, popular explanations of quantum mechanics are often, let me say, romanticized. Now, grab your cup of coffee or tea and let me take you on a journey into what the observer effect really is, and critically, what it's not. Our starting point? A classic experiment you might already know, the infamous double-slit experiment. If there's a gateway drug to misinterpreting quantum mechanics, this experiment is it. Picture this. You fire a stream of electrons through two narrow slits toward a screen. If you don't measure which slit the electrons go through, they create this jaw-dropping interference pattern on the screen, as if they're acting like waves. But here's the plot twist. If you do measure which slit they go through, bam, the interference pattern disappears, and the electrons act like particles. Weird, right? Now here's where it gets twisted. People hear about this and think, oh, observing the electrons made them change their behavior. Reality depends on conscious observation. But nope, that's not what's happening at all. Let me repeat, quantum experiments don't require a conscious observer. All they need is a measurement or interaction with the system. And that can be done by non-human, completely unconscious devices like detectors, for instance. Super sci-fi. Cool? Sure. Evidence the universe revolves around you? Not even close. Okay, let's break this down so it's super clear. What does measurement actually mean in quantum mechanics? Well, in essence, measurement is any interaction with the particle that causes a quantum state to decohere. It collapses from being in a superposition of states to one definite state. You don't need an eyeball. You don't need a brain. You just need a physical interaction. Does it feel less magical now? Maybe, but it's also more fascinating, at least from my perspective. Here's an analogy that might help. Think of a quantum particle as a spinning coin, heads and tails blurred together. If you jiggle the table too hard, boom, the coin stops spinning, and you're left looking at heads or tails. Measurement is like the jiggle. The heads or tails outcome doesn't arise because you believe in the coin or care enough to inspect its fate. It stops spinning because your jiggle, a disturbance, makes it stop. Make sense? So why do people continue to misinterpret this? Blame it partly on poor communication and partly on humanity's tendency to see patterns that place us at the center of the universe. It's seductive, the idea that our consciousness can warp reality itself. But science, at its best, tames these indulgent ideas, which makes it all the more thrilling when a real discovery comes along to show us how the universe actually works. Case in point, remember, quantum mechanical observation isn't an act of looking. It's an act of influencing the physical setup of the system. All right, now we're warmed up. Ready to turn up the heat? In the intermediate lab of quantum physics, you'll bump into something called the wave function. It's basically like the master spreadsheet of possibilities, dictating the probabilities of where a quantum particle might be or what state it might occupy. And yes, measurement, the kind that's fully mindless, updates this very wave function. In the jargon, we call this collapse. But, and here's an essential twist, no one actually fully understands why quantum measurement causes wave function collapse. Does it happen instantly? Is information transmitted faster than light? A whole catalog of ideas from quantum theories like many worlds to Bohmian mechanics to cubism wrestle with these questions. None of them screams, hey, consciousness does this. Though, in truth, the idea of consciousness meddling in quantum physics had a good start in mid-20th century interpretations, stemming mainly from the works of physicists like Eugene Wigner, but even Wigner dropped the notion over time. Why? Because as experiments got more sophisticated, 
it became overwhelmingly clear that detectors did just fine creating quantum effects without our minds getting involved. Consciousness-based theories ended up straying into the land of metaphysics rather than physical science. Now, let's throw in a head-spinning paradox to spice things up. Schrodinger's cat. You know this one, right? The half-joke, half-serious thought experiment about a cat in a box that's both alive and dead until someone opens the box to check? It's catchy, but don't let it fool you. The point wasn't to show how human observation determines the feline's fate. It was to highlight the absurdity of applying quantum rules to something as large as a cat. And today, experimental evidence shows decoherent seals Schrodinger's feline fate. No humans needed. Poor cat. And hey, speaking of big things behaving quantumly, there's this mind-blowing field called macroscopic quantum phenomena. You've got stuff like laser light or superconductors that operate quantum mechanically as collective entities. But again, detectors, not human introspection, determine how these things work. Physicists routinely measure entangled properties of photons or atoms across citywide networks, all without requiring even a single ounce of mindful meditation or observation. Still, if you're thinking, but Ollie, isn't it still amazing our detectors can elicit these phenomena? I totally agree. While the universe may not need us to exist, the very fact that we can build systems capable of probing the quantum realm? That's miraculous in itself, isn't it? I mean, a hundred years ago, ideas like quantum coherence or entanglement would have sounded like pure witchcraft. And now we're creating real working technologies based on these very principles, like quantum computers. Crazy, huh? One last layer before we wrap this up, okay? Even though the observer effect isn't about consciousness, don't underestimate the implications of measurement for our understanding of reality. The fact that particles behave differently when measured reveals how deeply interconnected the fabric of space and matter is. Let that sink in for a second. We might not be at the center of it all, but we are part of a truly intricate, astonishing cosmos. Every time we detect, measure, and verify, we're unraveling this great cosmic tapestry one thread at a time. All right, I've thrown a lot at you. Wave functions, measurement, decoherence, detectors, and yeah, a dead or alive joke of a cat. Quantum mechanics might not bend its knee to your consciousness, but it's not any less awe-inspiring for that. In fact, I'd argue it's even more marvelous to appreciate the universe on its own deeply complex terms, unencumbered by the illusion that it needs us to exist. Really makes you feel small, in the best possible way. Before I sign off, I genuinely want to know, what do you think? Has this helped you see quantum mechanics differently? Or do you still have burning questions about how observers and measurements fit into it all? Let me know in the comments. If this video made you question some of the deeply embedded cliches about science, consider hitting that like button. Better yet, subscribe to HyperFocus. We're a smaller, fresh channel, and your support means the absolute multiverse to me. Oh, and you might want to peek at our other deep dives into the mysteries of physics and philosophy. As always, stay hyper-focused and keep collapsing those wave functions. Figuratively, of course.